In this screen capture video, I'm going to talk to you about measures of central tendency. Remember that this class is about telling stories with data. And one big feature of this is being able to take a large amount of data and summarize it, try to find what are the important pieces of it, or take a variable and find what are the important aspects of that variable to be able to tell a summary of that variable. Basically, it's called data reduction. You reduce a large amount of data to a small amount of numbers. And measures of central tendency fit in with this. Now here I have a spreadsheet with incomes from five friends, John, Lewis, Carl, Sam, and Bill, from 2008, 09, and 010. If we focus first on the 2008 and ask those incomes and ask ourselves, if you have these five friends making these this amount of money in 2008, John making 30, thousand, Lewis making 30,000, Carl making 40, Sam making 50,000, Bill making 60,000. And you ask yourselves, how could we summarize their incomes in general? Say we want to get a sense of what's the standard of living of these five people. Of course, we can just recount their incomes and state them, but we want something simpler or quicker than that. And that's where measures of central tendency come in. Of course, the mean is really the best known measure of central tendency is just the average. The mean and average are synonyms. It's identical. If we calculate the average of these five incomes, we can do that easily in Excel with the average function equals average. And then I can uh, press open parentheses. I'm going to highlight all the numbers. The addresses show up in the function bar like this, E6 colon E10, that means E6 to E10, close parenthesis, hit enter, and it gives me 42,000. You also notice it has this little green, um, you could say it's an error uh, notification. All it really means is that because there was no number in here, it gives us that little notification. If we click on the exclamation point, point, it says formula emits adjacent cells because we didn't have anything in here. Basically, Excel, Excel's trying to highlight the fact that maybe there's a problem. In this case, there isn't, so we can ignore that. So what does the average give us here? The average gives us, well, most of us know how to calculate the average. You add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers, in this case, 5. And it gives you a general sense of the income or standard of living of these five people. What about the median? The median is really the middle number. It's the number that comes in the middle. If the way to calculate the median is that you would rank all the numbers, sort them, and they are sorted here, and then you would look for the one in the middle, and that should be Carl with 40,000. Incidentally, if we had an even number of numbers, if we only had, say, uh, 30,000, 30,000, 50, and 60, then you, there would be no number in the middle. Let me talk about what you would do in that case. But in, in any way, with Excel, of course, we don't actually have to do any of this. We can use the median function in the same way we use the average function. Highlight all of these numbers like that and it gives us the median, which again is 40,000. Now let me come back and say, let's say we did have four friends rather than five, and we wanted to get the median of these four numbers missing Carl. There is no number in the middle, so what they do is they take the middle two numbers and take the average of them. So it would end up being 40,000 as well. If I took if I calculated the median equals median and highlighted these four numbers, oops, you're going to get 40,000. Okay. The nice thing about Excel is, let's say Lewis's income was actually 35,000. Change that number like that. Excel automatically recalculates that average, went up a little bit. Notice the median didn't change. Let's put that back to 30,000. The final measure of central tendency is the mode. The mode is just simply the most common value, most commonly occurring value. And here we have 30,000 is 
John and Lewis. So 30,000 is going to end up being the mode. If I type in equals mode, open parentheses, open parentheses, highlight these five numbers, close parentheses, it's going to give me 30,000, like that. Again, I could ignore these uh, so-called errors. They're not really errors. It's just Excel letting us know there might be a problem. Now, why would you want, the question is why would you want to use the mean rather than the median or the mode rather than any of the others? Well, how do you choose between or among these measures of central tendency? I'm going to focus on specifically decision between using the mean or the median. Sometimes if you look at statistics uh, in the news, sometimes they'll report the mean income, sometimes the median income. If we know the median is the middle, and the mean is just the sum of all the numbers divided by how many there are, that doesn't really necessarily tell us, well, when would you use one and not the other? In order to do that, we're going to come to look at 2009, when it looks like everybody's income has stayed the same, except for Bill, who started working in the financial industry, and his income went up dramatically. Now, if we recalculate these mean, median, and mode, What's going to happen? Okay, well, we can guess the mean's going to go up quite a bit, right? And actually, in order to, to calculate this mean, I'm not going to enter that formula in again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this cell with this average in it here. And if you see the little black marker in the, on the very, the, the, the little black box on the bottom left-hand corner, or right-hand corner, rather, I'm going to line up my cursor right here press down the mouse and drag it over. And now what it did was Excel, instead of just copying that 42,000 over, it copied the formula and it changed the, the addresses for the formula in a way that it figured you wanted. In this case, it was right. Now it's taking the average of these five numbers right here, 30,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, and 200,000. And let me just enter those numbers in again, because it seems like it's not recognizing. There we go. Sometimes Excel doesn't recognize that something's a number, and then it just counts it as a zero. So that's why that average ended up being lower. But now it's, it should be correct. Now with Bill's income going up 140,000, the mean goes up by quite a bit. It's now 70,000. The median, what happens to the median? If I drag the median over like this, the median stays the same, right? And I can do the same thing with the mode, and the mode stays the same. Now let's focus on the mean and the median here. Bill here is now making a whole lot more money than the four of his friends, and the mean reflects that. On the other hand, the median stays the same. This is the big difference between the median and the median. Mean and the median. Bill is what you would call an outlier, meaning a value that's much higher or lower, in other words, more extreme than the other values. Means or averages, whatever you want to call them, are affected a lot by outliers, whereas medians are not, and that's the big difference. So you have to think in terms of which one to use mean and the median as a summary of these incomes, you have to think about what you're really looking for. If we're trying to give a general sense of the standard of living of these five people, if we want to take into account Bill's outsized income, then the average is good. On the other hand, 70,000, an average of 70,000 is much higher than these other four of his friends. And it doesn't really reflect their standard of living very well. So we might want to keep the median because the median is unaffected by those outliers. We can come, you know, in, if we look again at, two, say, uh, now at 2010, now Bill is making a million dollars. If I slide over the mean, the mean now jumps to 230,000. The median, on the other hand, of course, stays the same because the median is still that middle value, so it doesn't matter what Bill makes. 
the mode again stays the same because there's still more people making 30,000 than any of the others. So now we can see this even more clearly that the average is affected dramatically by outliers, whereas the median is immune to outliers. It remains the same regardless of what those outlier values are. And that's the big difference. If we think of incomes in general, usually there's a small number of people making a lot of money. So that means the average of any kind of set of incomes is generally going to be higher than the median, just the way it is here. So usually it's not that extreme, but we do get that. The mean tends to be higher than the median when there's a small number of people making a lot of money pulling up that mean income. The median income, on the other hand, is unaffected by those high values and remains the, where it is in the center of the distribution. So sometimes when you have outliers, you really want to use the median rather than the mean. Now the mode in this case is not really all that useful because even though there's two people making 30,000, that doesn't really give you a great sense of the central tendency of, or, or a general summary of these five people. Mode is better when you have nominal level variables. For example, if we asked, if we were thinking about majors at William Patterson, it would be a good thing to ask a way to summarize those majors by saying, what's the modal major? In other words, what's the most common major? If it's business or something like that. We can't obviously take the average or the median major. So for nominal variables, in order to summarize them, the mode is a good idea. But for interval level variables like this, and even ordinal variables, sometimes the, the mean and the median are better. And then it's just a matter of decision about if they're extreme outliers and you don't want your measure of central tendency to be affected by them dramatically in the way that it is here, with the mean being 230,000, then you want to go with the median. And the reasoning behind that is, of course, that these measures of central tendency the point is to summarize, in this case, standard of living. You're trying to give a sense of what's the general standard of living that's experienced by these five people. In 2010, if we give the mean 230,000, it's obviously much higher than four out of the five people. So it probably doesn't really reflect their reality, whereas the median does reflect the reality of more of the people in this group.